So welcome back to stage four of Nourish of the um, I, the Wellbeing Festival. And today it gives me great pleasure to introduce, we've got Carol Baker, who's a yoga teacher and wellness advisor, health and wellness, and is going to give us a brilliant session on, um, on looking after our, no, not that one, excuse me on that one, reset and de-stress your digestive digestion with yoga nutrition and mindfulness which sounds amazing so I'll hand it over to you Carol. Thank you very much Rachel welcome everybody good morning um, I would like if possible for you to have a space where you can lie down uh, just at least for this first couple of minutes of me blabbing on with an introduction uh, so if you want to lie in a comfortable position, my suggestion is that you have your feet on the floor with your knees bent and you just allow your arms to come out beside you and you allow your spine to settle. So if you want to make yourself comfortable in that position for a moment, you're just basically taking the weight off your bones and allowing your spine to connect with the surface of the earth. You know, your head is pretty heavy. You've done a good job of supporting that in an upright position so far today. So just allow yourself to rest as I um, give you a brief introduction of what we're going to do today. Uh, so a little bit about me. Yes, I'm a yoga teacher, but if you told me 30 years ago uh, that I was going to become a yoga teacher, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> My background is catering and business management and also pharmaceutical. So um, I did at some point in my life sell drugs, drugs to GPs, I'd just like to clarify that. Um, and that sent me into looking at complementary therapies and alternative medicine. And lo and behold, I find myself now for the last uh, 17 years teaching yoga and um, well-being. And I have in the past run a well-being centre, but I've uh, given that up now, just have a little studio here at home. So if you've not done yoga before, you may have some preconceived ideas about what yoga is about. I thought it was all chanting and staring at a candle and old granny farting and mung beans and muesli and terribly serious. And uh, uh, it's not. There are many different styles. Uh, for me, the main benefits are to connect from the neck down. So to think about connecting in with your body. You know, most of us have inhabited this body for a while, so we should really know how it functions we should know what it likes and what it dislikes and sometimes we forget that because we're in our heads too much so we will open up tight spots and we will strengthen weak spots but the idea is to bring the body back into this state of balance and ease as opposed to disease so we are creatures that need to adjust constantly to homeostasis and yoga and mindfulness can help us do that so today we're focusing particularly on the digestive system. Um, you know, there still may be a little bit of residual stress in the digestive system from the Christmas excesses. So I thought it would be a good one to look at, but also I'm very conscious of the link between digestion and overall health and well-being. So, you know, digestive health, sometimes this time of the year is the top of everybody's agenda or the tip of everyone's tongue, if you'll excuse the, the pun. You know, we've got Veganuary and uh, someone told me about Fish February or something. I can't remember what it was. Um, and we're bombarded with what to eat and what not to eat. So what I'm really interested in is that the gut contains um, an un unimaginable number of nerves, more um, connections really in the gut brain than anywhere else in the body. And so we know now that the nerve endings in our gut have a direct link to the brain via the vagus nerve. Uh, we know that gut feelings are more than just gut feelings. So we know that things like IBS uh, can be caused by um, the incorrect balance of gut bacteria within our system. And we know that this microbiome within our gut affects not just our mood, but our digestive system and also any other types of diseases that we may be prone to suffer from. So what I've done on our handout today is I've given you a lot of information about digestive health from a well-being perspective. Um, and I will cover briefly some of those things as we're in our yoga poses today. But there's a lot of information from things, for instance, like the Mental Health Foundation, looking at good mood foods and the sort of foods that you can eat to 
really overcome deficiencies and how certain deficiencies in nutrients can exacerbate mental health conditions like anxiety, like um, uh, forgetfulness, like anger, you know, all these kinds of things can be linked to deficiencies in our diet. Uh, I'm not a big advocate for um, vitamin and mineral supplements unless they are completely necessary. So I've given you a list of foods that contain these um, certain vitamins and minerals as well, plus obviously the supplementation. I've also given you a lot of information on what to do to balance the gut flora, because it is so important. So looking at probiotics and prebiotics and um, where you can find those as good sources. So what I'd like to focus on for the next little while is really the effects that yoga has on the digestive system. I'm scrolling through my little presentation there for you. Um, and yoga, you know, has been around for thousands of years. There are many yoga poses. For instance, I have a book out there in my, in my porch that has 2,100 yoga poses in it. <laughs> Don't expect me to name them all to you, but yoga poses were designed really to keep the body in this state of balance, in this state of ease. And there are various poses for various benefits, even poses for certain glands of the org organs of the body and certain muscles and, and uh, joints, etc. So in general, certain poses in yoga will help tone, strengthen and detoxify the digestive system. So primarily they will be twisting poses because if you think about your abdomen, there's basically a big bowl of soup with sponges floating within it. And that sponge might be the liver or the um, pancreas or you know, the stomach. When you twist the body, it's like you're squeezing that abdomen. So if you think about squeezing a sponge, the blood will come out, the water will come out of the sponge. When you release the sponge, it will fill with fresh water. So your digestive system gets the opportunity to take on fresh energy, fresh oxygenated blood supply. So twist is something we're gonna focus on in our session today, but also we're gonna focus on inverting the body. Okay, so you know, here's my bottle of water as an example. So, you know, most of the day my, my body is in this position. Um, if I go like that, you can see what happens to the fluid in the body, it's going to move. And the body is made up of a lot of water, as is the digestive system. So when we invert the body, we give, again, the organs a chance to reposition. I'm not saying that your kidneys will end up in your ears, but you're just allowing the body to rebalance itself. The other benefit of inverting the body is it reverses the aging effects of gravity, and I'm all for that. So I'm actually 98, but I just look 58 because I do an inversion every day, okay? So without further ado, we're gonna start with some basic warm-up poses. I would just like to say from the old health and safety perspective, if anything doesn't feel right to you, if there's any sharp pain in the body, I need you to modify. You are the best teacher. I'm a facilitator, it's very, challenging to teach remotely on yoga because I'm used to laying my hands on people and helping them adjust if that's within their comfort zone of course so I need you to be the guardian of your body you know it best I will make suggestions in the poses and I will give different levels and those levels are not in a competitive way to say you have to get to the next level but the basic principle is you are just dipping your toe in the water and testing the temperature of the water and if that temperature is okay for you, then you will stay in that pose and you will listen to what your body has to say. Is it telling you there's an area that's tight that needs to open up? Or is it telling you there's an area that's weak that needs to strengthen? And you will be the judge. If you need to come out at any point, come out of the pose, you can lie down on your back and hug your knees into your chest, or you can do child's pose, which I will introduce to you later. All right, so I'm gonna join you on the floor now. Um, we will, after our yoga practice, spend a little bit of time talking about the benefits of breathing for both the digestive system and stress and anxiety. So let's connect in with our breath just to start. Notice how your breath feels this morning or this evening whenever you're looking at this session. And see if you can smooth out the edges of your breath. Does your breath feel smooth or does it feel a little bit jaggedy? Can you allow your breath to be divided into four sections? You've got the exhalation, that's the most important breath that you take. That's the releasing, relaxing, 
You've got a little pause after the exhalation. And then you have the inhalation, which is about re-energizing and revitalizing. And then you have another pause after that inhalation. So just for the first moment or two, I'd like you to allow your breathing to find its natural equilibrium. How does that breath need to flow right now in this moment? Can you maybe consider allowing the breath to slow down? And you also maybe consider allowing the inhale to be relatively light, but the exhale to be relatively deep. So just another couple of moments connecting in. You're gonna unplug the brain from the external world, the internet of thinking and connect it in with the body. And at the moment, your breathing is going to become the bridge between the body and the mind. So when you're ready now, I'd like you to stretch your legs out along your mat. Sweep your arms up in the air like you're making a snow angel. Link your fingers together. Press your palms away. Now, I always yawn when I do this, whatever time day is. So don't worry about having a little yawn, but have a stretch. And have a lovely, beautiful, languishing stretch. Cats are very good at stretching. We'll do a cat pose in a minute. So once you've had that lovely stretch, I'd like you to bring both knees up towards your chest and hug the knees in towards your chest. So I've got my hands on my knees, but my arms are straight. I've got my chin drawn down. And the first little warm-up pose we're going to do is called the energy freeing pose but it's also known as the wind relieving pose. So we might need to have a, a warning for this one. So all you're gonna do is as you exhale, you're gonna squeeze your knees towards your chest. And then as you inhale, you're gonna allow your knees to move away so your arms straighten again. Okay, so as you exhale, squeeze your thighs and your knees towards your chest. Your bottom may or may not lift a millimeter. And as you inhale, allow your knees to come away. So quite often it feels like you're not doing very much in this pose. Continue at your own speed, but it is very powerful. So in terms of energy freeing, it's gonna release any compressed and compacted energy in the base of your spine. If you've been doing a lot of sitting so far today, that's gonna to be a great benefit. And the reason it's called the wind relieving pose is your thighs, as you bring them towards your chest, by pressing on your lower abdomen, whereby is situated your colon. So occasionally there might be a little bit of um, wind that relieves, but don't worry, it's better out than in, I say. Let's do it a few more times. The only other thing I want you to be aware of, please, is not to hunch your shoulders and to make sure that your chin is not lifting up. Can you keep your chin drawn down towards your chest? Okay, make this the last one. Take your knees wide. Still got a hand on each knee. Your elbows are sticking out to the side. I'd like to introduce you to the flollop. So the flollop is a free back massage. You're basically going to rock from one elbow across to the other. And as you do that, you're massaging all the way through the back of the body. You might notice it feels a little bit uneven, a little bit jagged, but you're just trying to smooth out. You're taking blood down into the back of the body and just massaging to warm up the spine. Okay, we're going to come back to straightening the legs out. And we're going to do a little bit of breath and movement together now. So it's sort of half of the wind relieving pose, but we're going to stretch the neck as well. So as you take an inhale, the arms are going to stretch up above you. You're going to link your fingers together and press your palms away and stretch your toes and heels away. As you exhale now, just your right knee is bending. Your arms are coming forward and your knee is coming towards your chest. As you inhale, you're going to stretch that right leg out again, take your arms up above you again. And as you exhale now, you're going to bring your left knee up, take your arms around the knee, hug that knee in towards the chest. Remember not to lift the chin. Let's repeat again. Inhale, lengthening, opening, releasing. Exhale, squeezing the knee in towards the chest. No shoulders joining in. 
One more like this, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, left knee to the chest. So I'm gonna ask you to do four more of these, but you've got the option now to bring your head up as well as your knee. So as you inhale, lengthen, exhale, the right knee comes up, you draw the chin to the chest and you decide if you want to bring your head up. Now you're not trying to get your nose on your knee because I don't want you to force it. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, you bring your left knee up, chin to chest, you may then decide to bring your head up towards your knee. So we're gonna do two more, and if your neck is stiff, you don't wanna do that, you keep your head on the floor. But what you're not doing is trying to create tension and trying to force any movement. So we've got the right leg just completed now, inhaling, and then the left leg slowly, Gently, shoulders relaxed. Keep the other leg pressed to the floor. Let's go one more each side. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, right knee to the chest, head up or not, you decide. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, left knee. So now we can release and take both feet to the floor, bend the knees. I'd like the feet to come quite close into the sitting bones. And you might just want to stretch your neck when in this position. So take the back of your head in your hands and just try and get another centimeter of length out of your neck. And then as you look down the body, try and lay the head in a straight line back onto the floor. Take your arms down beside you. So again, just to engage ourselves in the present moment, we're going to do breathing and movement together. This time again, we're going to control the arms and the legs, but also we're going to lift and lower at the bottom. So as we breathe in this time, the knees are going to press forward and your bottom's going to lift, but also your arms are lifting as well. And at the end of your in-breath, you've got your arms as close to the floor above your head as you can. You might need to take them wider and your bottom up in the air. You can have a little pause there, keep pressing your knees forward and your feet to the floor. And now as you exhale, I'd like you to lower your spine one vertebrae at a time and your hands. So at the end of your exhale, bingo, you touch them both together. You're going to repeat this five more times. Inhale, push the knees forward, lift your bottom, peel your back off the floor, one vertebrae at a time, your arms come up, they reach up above you, backs of the hands as close to the floor as you can. Exhale. You're slowly lowering down one vertebra at a time, the arms coming down in total control. We've got four more of these to do. Bridge pose, but using the breath at the same time. So it's inhale on the way up, a little pause, exhale on the way down. The only other thing I want you to be aware of for your last few is that the knees don't drift out or in. So keep the knees going forward. This is in your own time now. Inhaling to come up and exhaling to come down. I'd like you to do two more, please. Inhale slowly, don't be in a hurry. Feel that lovely length through the body. Now think of this obviously as an inversion. So the blood is moving from the pelvis and the digestive system down towards the head, neck and shoulders. Slight inversion of the Lower body, let's go last time, inhale up. And exhale down. Okay, I'd like to just do a little hip stretch here. I know it's not necessarily a digestive pose, but it's so good for hips, you've done a lot of sitting. Cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Option one, left hand on the inside of the left knee, press that towards the end of your mat. The stretch should be somewhere in your left hip. If you want to go a little further with this, you're going to thread your left hand through the hole between your legs. Take hold of the back of your right thigh now with both hands. Your right foot has come off the floor and you're going to squeeze that right thigh towards your chest, which is going to give you probably a more interesting stretch, that's my favorite word, on that left hip. So again, have a look now down at that right knee, make sure it's not twisting in. Make sure your left foot is flexed. You've got your ankle on your thigh. Don't let the shoulders join in and try not to throw the head up. So bring the chin down. 
If you want to go a little deeper still, you could hold the front of the right shin, but remember this is just the warm up, so take it nice and steady. So as you exhale, you've got that opportunity, that invitation to squeeze that right thigh towards your chest, and there should be an interesting stretch in your left hip. So this works primarily into the piriformis and the hip flexors, uh, into the lower part of your spine. There's a, a good chance if you get something like sciatica, then this would be a pose that if you practiced it every day, it would pretty much release that sciatica over time if it was caused by muscular tightness, which often it is. So a couple more breaths here. And then we'll gently release, take both feet to the floor again. This time we're going to swap sides, so the right ankle is going to go over the left thigh. Option one, right hand on the inside of the right knee. You press that towards the front of your mat. Or option two, you thread your hands through, you take hold of the back of the left thigh and the left foot is lifted. So remember what I said earlier, this is about you dipping your toe in the water and judging how much you can feel in that right hip where you can feel any resistance. You're not trying to force anything ever. My other favorite phrase is a blend between effort and effortless. So think relaxed jaw. There's a very interesting connection between your jaw and your hips. The more you clench your teeth, the tighter your hips are. That's a fascial connection, a connective tissue connection. So as I exhale, I'm squeezing that left thigh in and I'm noticing my right hips a little tighter, but that's down to me being right-handed and having a habit of extreme gardening. So let's do a couple more breaths here. And then let's release it. So both feet going to come to the floor. The arms are going to come out at the side now, at shoulder height, palms facing up. We're going to do our first twist. So basic principles of a twist is the head goes one way and the legs go the other. So we're going to let the knees flop to the right. Doesn't matter if they come to the floor or not, and the head turns to the left. So we're creating a stretch down the left side of the body. We've got the right side of the neck, obviously first, but then we've got from the left shoulder down to the left side of the waist, into the left lower back and hip. But we're gently rotating through the torso. Now, if you wanna go a little deeper in this twist, take the foot that's at the bottom of the pile, which should be the right one, and place that on top of your left thigh. So that's gonna create a little bit of weight, a little bit of traction. And that may enable you to lengthen a little bit more down the left side. What I want you to avoid is lifting the left arm and shoulder, please. So keep that left hand, back of hand on the floor and your elbow connected to the floor. Let's do two or three breaths here. This is just you and gravity. And just notice that effect through the left side. Now in these twisting poses that we're gonna to do today, you might notice some physiological changes in the body. You might get tingling in your fingers. These twists are also very good at stimulating the central nervous system. You might feel quite hot because twists are good at stimulating the circulatory system. But you might also hear your stomach start to rumble. That's a good sign. That means we're starting to assist the digestive system. So let's gently release the head back to the center first and the legs back and cross them. Both feet flat on the floor again, reposition, arms out to the side at shoulder height, palms up. This time the knees go across to the left, so I'm just rolling my feet, and the head turns to the right. So you might have noticed this in the previous warm-up pose, in that little hip opener, that one side of the body is tighter than the other. That's quite common as we are creatures of habit. So once you're aware of that, you can work with certain poses and certain stretches to try and release. So option one is you stay here. Option two is that left foot that's at the bottom of the pile comes up onto your right thigh. And you just allow yourself to breathe here. Softening through that right shoulder, softening all the way through the right side of your body. This is a good stretch for runners. It works the IT band as well, which is often tight in runners. So let's go for two or three more breaths here. Just noticing what you're feeling physically, but also what you're feeling physiologically. Any changes that you can start to pick up on. Okay, let's release that gently. Head comes back to center first, knees come back to center second. 
We'll go back to what we started with, a little hug in at the knees. And then you've got a choice. You can either roll yourself up into sitting, we can roll onto your right hand side and use your hands to support you. But we're going to come up into sitting, doing a little time check. Okay, let's come on to hands and knees. So we're going to do a pose called cat and then we're going to do a pose called dog. Okay, so with your hands on the floor, it's really important you've got the weight evenly balanced through your hands. You don't want all the weight of your wrists, so spread your fingers wide, but your elbows slightly softened. So if you have a cat at home, you're very familiar with the movements they make. This is the first movement. You're tucking under, arching your back to the ceiling. The second movement is you're making a U shape. You're pulling the heart forward, the head up, the tail back. So again, I'd like you to get into a rhythm of breathing and moving together. So as you exhale, you're tucking your tailbone under, your chin to your chest, and arching the middle back to the ceiling. As you inhale, you're lifting your tail up, your heart coming forward, your head coming up, your shoulders remaining neutral. And if you want to add a little bit of abdominal tone into this, at the end of the exhale, you can squeeze your tummy bump up towards the spine. So squeeze your navel in. Inhale, lengthen. Think about all 24 vertebrae of your spine and just think to yourself, I'm just trying to get a bit of space in between each one. Do a few more breaths here. Inhale to lift and lengthen. Whatever speed works for you, but slowing the breathing down, as you'll learn later on, is really beneficial for your digestion and for your stress levels. One more of each. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, roll under. Okay, so I'm going to give you your emergency get out pose if you need to. If any of the other poses become a little bit too interesting, you're going to come head on the floor. Bottoms going back towards your heels. It might not get there, so don't worry. Backs of hands behind you. Gradually over the course of time, this lower back will stretch and you will get your bottom down to your heels. But if you think about this pose as well, it's the same as for the very first pose we did, except for with the other way around. So you've got your thighs on your lower abdomen again. But it's releasing for your back, it's releasing for your shoulders, and it's just very restorative and very calming. It's known as child's pose. Okay, so that is your get out clause. So if you want to come back up onto your knees, you're gonna go into the downward facing dog pose. Now the downward facing dog pose is an inversion. So just watch if you have blood pressure issues, make sure that you come out of it very slowly. We're gonna take it one step further today and we're going to go for a three legged dog. Okay, and we're also gonna try a pose ridiculously named the dog wing up the tree. That's not the yoga name for it, that's just my name for it. Okay, so teach kids sometimes. So if I demonstrate, Starting cat pose, tuck the toes underneath me. You'll see dogs do this stretch. Bottom up towards the ceiling, head looking down towards my feet. Try not to be hunched here in the shoulders. Once you're in this pose, you're going to take your leg and literally cock your leg. And that's going to give you a little bit more of an inversion and it's going to stretch into the lower part of your abdomen. If that's too much for you, I need you to keep both feet on the floor. If it's too much in your hands, think about where the weight is and drop to your forearms. So do a puppy dog instead. Okay, so let's try this together. Fingers spread wide, middle fingers at 12 o'clock. Don't have all the weight in the heel of your hands. Bring it into your fingertips. Bend your knees, launch your bottom up to where the ceiling and the wall join. Bring your armpits towards your feet. Let your head release. If your neck is tight, perfect opportunity to release it. You're not having to support the weight of your head. And then do what I would call walking the dog on the spot. So bend one knee and just gently extend the opposite heel towards the floor. This is hamstrings. You will feel that and calves, but it's lower back. But again, we're using it as an inversion. And then if you want to increase the inversion, Take one leg, whichever one you want, up in the air, and then turn the hip out. So bend the knee as if you really look like a dog wing up a tree. Watch because it's much more interesting on your arms now because you've only got one leg to support you. So come down with that leg when you're ready. Remember, you don't have to do this. Take the other leg up, open the hip out. You can look under your armpit, different view. And then back to both feet on the floor. So bring your knees down when you're ready. 
And don't take your head up just yet. Bring your hands behind you and bring your head to the floor into child's pose. So just stay in child's pose for a couple of moments. And then very gently and slowly draw yourself up into sitting. Move on to your bottom. And if it's possible, you're going to come into a cross-legged position. It does depend very much on how your hips and knees are. Cross-legged doesn't work for you. I'm absolutely fine if you have your legs straight or the soles of your feet together. But cross-legged would be ideal. And if you can find your sitting bones, they're underneath everything else. Okay, so sit up nice and tall. Think about the length of your spine. When we're sitting in a chair, we've got the chair to support us so that we can lean back on it and slump. I want you to try and avoid that and use your stomach muscles and your back muscles to support you. So we're going to do some seated twists at various um, stages, shall we say. And the first um, seated twist is done with the legs crossed or straight. But the principle is the same as the lying twist. So we're going to take the left hand onto the right knee. Okay, now this right knee might be up, that's okay. It'll come down one day when it's ready to. You're going to take your right arm up in the air, think about lengthening. You can do this on sitting in a chair, you can do this sitting at your desk, it's absolutely fine. The right hand's going to come either, if you're in the chair, onto the back of your chair, or onto the floor, but you're going to resist the temptation to do that and lean back on it. Okay, so you need to keep yourself upright. And then you're going to move from your tummy button, from your breastbone and from your nose, you're gradually going to turn to the right. Now you're using your arms as a lever, but you're not pressing so hard with your arms that you're hunching all of your shoulders. So think about space across the chest. So every time you inhale, can you make yourself another millimeter taller? And as you exhale, just think of this unwinding towards that right side. You will reach a point where you feel stuck. That's fine, close your eyes. So you're not trying to get anywhere, you're trying to unwind. So every inhale, a millimetre of length, and every exhale, even if it's half a millimetre of unwinding. Now this you might start to notice again the tingling, you might hear the stomach rumbling, and you're probably going to start to feel a little bit of heat. So remember that heat is just energy that is being moved in your body. Einstein, that clever man, he worked out that energy, energy can never be destroyed, it can only be transformed. And you are transforming energy from one part of your body which has been stuck into heat. And that's just dissipating now. So let's do a few more breaths here. And then very slowly, leave with your head, Come all the way back round. It's only when you come back round you realize how far you went. So if you've got your teeth in your fingers, let's just move the hands, rotate the wrist. Now, you probably didn't realize if you're sitting cross-legged, which leg you crossed in front, because it's just a habit, isn't it? So I'm gonna ask you to change your habit and change your legs the other way around. First time I tried to do this, I felt like I've got somebody else's legs, okay, so they didn't feel the same. It's the same when you fold your arms. You know, when you fold your arms, you don't ever think about which hand is on top and which hand is underneath. And then you try and work out how to do it the other way around and you spend about 10 minutes trying to do this. But gradually, you'll get to the stage where they're the other way around and they feel okay. Anyway, irrelevance. We're going the other way. So right hand now onto the left knee. Again, don't worry if the knee's high. Left arm up, so you're lengthening first. Then take that left arm right behind you, trying not to lean back. As you inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, you're unwinding this time to the left. Once you've got to the point where you feel that little bit of resistance, you're not going to fight that resistance. You're going to embrace it and you're going to breathe. So as you inhale, there is another millimeter of potential length in your spine. And as you exhale, there is half a millimeter of unwinding that you can probably find over that left shoulder. Draw the chin slightly up and in, try not to drop your head. Think about the energy going from the top of your head upwards, so your head is connected to your spine. A few more breaths. Notice if it's different on this side to the other. It might feel different just because you've got your legs crossed the other way as well. A few more breaths. 
You're not trying to get anywhere. Just listening. You might hear the occasional clip in your back. That was my back then. Okay, very slowly, gently, head comes around first. And the rest of you follows. Okay, let's stretch the legs out and have them crossed. Okay, I would like us to come up into standing. Okay, so slowly, gently, bring yourself up into standing. We're going to do a pose which, to be honest, I don't really, I don't really like this pose. I find it quite challenging, quite interesting. It's known as the chair pose. So again, you can you can do it, uh, you know, at the workplace, but you just don't need the chair. You're pretending there's a chair there. So I've got my feet as close together as I can. Depends on the shape of your legs and the shape of your feet, but at least try to spread all 10 toes out. Okay, so you've got a relatively good balance between the toes and the heels. So I'm going to show you this pose sideways on because I think it's easier for you to see. I want you to imagine that there is a chair here and I'm trying to get my bottom onto the chair. What I'm not going to do is stick my bottom out like that. Okay, so I'm going to tuck my tummy under a little bit or tuck my tailbone under, put an imaginary belt around my tummy. I'm going to take my arms up and relax my shoulders, which is quite interesting on my shoulders. If needs be, I can bring my arms in front of me. But then we're going to try and sit down in this chair, keeping my back straight. Okay, so my chair might not be very high, but I'm trying not to do that. Can you see the difference? Yeah, so I'm trying to tuck under and sit down. And then I'm going to add a twist in. So I'm going to bring my hands to the center of my chest, relax my shoulders. Turn my fingers in towards me, so I've got a really nice wrist stretch. And then I'm just going to take the opposite elbow to the opposite leg. Now, it might be I can only get to there, that's fine. But it might be if I go down a little bit lower, I can rest that elbow on that knee. But then I don't want to collapse forward. Okay, so I need to keep lifting my hair's in the way and turning. So I want to try and open my chest here. And what that is also giving you is a pretty good workout for your thighs, which you've probably worked out now. Okay, so let's come back around. We're gonna try it again in a minute. Let's come back up and have a rest. Now, if you don't feel a rush of heat in that pose, you'd be really surprised. So I'm gonna come this way now, so again, you can see. You need to tuck under, think about an imaginary belt, so I'm not allowing this to happen. Sweep my arms behind me to come up. Soften my shoulders down, tuck my tailbone under, sit in the chair. And I can see myself on camera when I'm sticking my bottom out. And then bring my hands together. And then again, turn the other way. So I'm trying not to hunch forward and down, I'm trying to keep the chest open and work the elbow down towards the thigh. And I couldn't get my elbow anywhere near my thigh to start with. Because I can then use my elbow or my thigh to give me a little bit more rotation there but I need to keep open across the chest. That's where I find this very difficult, not to hunch forward and to breathe and to not um, let my legs fall off. Watch that one knee's not coming in front of the other. I just noticed I was doing that. Okay, let's swing it back around. Up we come. Okay, so you should feel quite warm now. I think that's a good pose to give um, people who uh, suffer from, you know, cold. Yeah, so perhaps we should get the elderly to do it to keep them warm. So we're going to do a standing twist now. And we're going to come to the front of the yoga mat or the space that you've got, watching that there's nothing you're going to fall into and that the floor's not too slippery. You can take the hands onto the hips and we're going to step back with the right foot. Now, as we step back the right foot, I'd like to try and drop the heel down. But the first thing you're going to need to do is to find your balance. If you feel like you're on a tightrope, you need to just go a little bit wider. I would like both of your hips to face the front edge of your mat or your space and for you to keep your right heel down because that really is your anchor point now. Okay, try and be really strong through that right leg. Now, whether you keep this left leg straight or not is going to depend on what's going on in your hamstrings. So again, I'm going to demonstrate this pose. It may feel a little bit like a balance, but remember you've got both feet on the floor. You just need to adjust your feet. So I'm going to come forward to a halfway point. I can bend this knee if I need to. Now I'm going to do the same thing. My hand is coming across. So right hand onto that left leg. And then I'm going to turn. Now if I go to turn and I go to fall, I'm going to stay here. I could take a little step out to the side with my right foot. And then I can turn my head to the left. I can stay with my left hand on my hip, or I can take my left arm up in the air. 
That is a lot more interesting through the spine. Okay, so let's try and hold this. It may be a little bit wobbly, but we can keep adjusting. So we've gone forward first over that left leg. The right hand's gone onto the outside of the left leg anywhere is fine, the knee can be soft. The left hip is drawing back slightly, which again, if that tips you off your balance, move your right foot. And then remember your balance mechanisms in your inner ear. So don't turn your head quickly. You can turn it very slowly to the left or you can stay looking at the floor. Your left hand can stay on your hip or it can float up to the ceiling. So this is known as reverse triangle pose. And it is an interesting twist, isn't it? And it's gonna get you quite warm. You're working a combination of strength and flexibility and balance in this pose. Don't forget to breathe. Let's reverse our way out of it. Slowly, 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 slowly. So you're looking at the floor and then come up gently. So you've had your head slightly below your heart. So lift yourself back up, good. Step that back leg to the front. So you should feel as if one leg's a little bit longer than the other now. <laughs> Let's try it the other way around. So again, every time we twist, we're working through the abdominal cavity. So let's go now, left foot back. And I'm trying to get that left heel down at an angle. So it's about five to five on a clock, isn't it? So again, I need to adjust my balance, spread my toes. Remember your center of gravity is here as well as your center of emotions. So it really helps. I use this analogy of drawing an invisible belt in. Hands on the hips, shoulders relaxed, neck part of the spine coming forward. And feel that right leg now, so we need to bend the knee, it's fine. Go for a really long spine, then drop the left hand onto the outside of the right leg somewhere. Keep pressing your right hip back. If you're feeling wobbly, adjust your left foot slightly wider. Option one, stay looking at the floor here. Option two, turn your head slowly to the right. Keep gently pressing that right hip back. Option two, stay here. Option three, unfurl, float up your right hand. Notice how it feels this side compared to the other. Try and stabilize through your feet. Squeeze your tummy in to use your core strength and breathe. Lengthen your neck, lengthen your arms, lengthen your legs and feel this unwinding into this twist. And slowly reverse it, hand comes down first. Head turns to the floor second. Release the other hand onto the hips third and slowly, 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 gently come up. Okay, step your feet back together. Everybody nice and warm now, let's sit back down. So let's see how we're doing for time. Pretty good. So we're going to do um, a sitting twist and a lying twist and we're gonna finish again with an inversion, okay? So this seated twist uh, is also for hips and knees and lower backs, but if you could take your legs slightly wide and then bring your right leg into the center. Okay, so depending on how that leg is, you might have to put, you know, a blanket underneath it or a cushion. Same with the knee, you could put something underneath the knee. You could do this one on the bed. Point yourself onto your sitting bones turn towards this left leg. Now this pose has an unfortunate name. So in yoga, we, there's a, a language called Sanskrit, which I, I don't use very often, but it would be, this would be known as Jani Sarasana. It's known as head to knee pose again. So the idea is you look at your knee and you think, I'm never gonna get my head to my knee. It doesn't matter. Okay, you're going to lengthen your spine, think all the way up to the top of the head, and you're literally going to offer your hands to the floor, the backs of your hands. And then you're just going to allow gravity, yeah, so the back of your head to start to soften towards your leg. And you might find that you can creep your hands forward a little bit. And then you can allow, finally, when you've got to the edge there, you can let your head to completely drop. Now your head may be a long way away from your knee, that doesn't matter. You're going to close your eyes. You're going to relax your shoulders. And you're going to breathe. Every inhale that you take, a bit like that other twist, you've still got the opportunity to lengthen your spine a millimetre. 
So your head kind of goes towards your left foot. But as you exhale, you need to soften everything in your upper body, your jaw particularly, your neck, your shoulders, your elbows, your arms, and you'll feel that softening all the way down through your back. You might feel it particularly in the right side of your back here and into this right hip. You've got your left hamstring as well. If that bothers you, put a blanket underneath your knee to release that hamstring. Okay, so close your eyes. We're gonna go for about five or six more breaths here. Everything in the upper body just softening. You're not trying to get anywhere. Just allowing all of this releasing towards the earth. Let's go for three more breaths left. And then very slowly and very gently, bring yourself back. And some of these poses you can hold for up to five minutes. Okay, have a stretch up, straighten that leg out. And then swap sides, so the left foot comes in. Okay, so turn towards the right leg this time, adjust yourself onto both sitting bones. Feel the length in your spine. It's always important to lengthen first, because you're just gonna do that. Okay, so lengthen first, and then you're just offering your hands forward towards the floor. I prefer back to hands, because I always have a tendency to try and push myself somewhere. I'm just gonna allow myself to kind of nestle and Fidget a little bit until I get to the point where I'm dipping my toe in the water and I can feel the resistance. And then I need to close my eyes and then I just need to breathe. I need to stay here and listen to the messages that the body is giving me. Where is it telling me I feel tight and resisted? Is it my hamstring? Is it my lower back? Is it my ankle, my knee, my hip? Is it my shoulders, my neck? Is it all of those? Or is it somewhere different? And as I fold forward, again, I'm compressing the digestive system. So again, I'm squeezing the abdomen. I'm gonna release it, there will be fresh blood into that cavity again. So a few more breaths on this side. You might notice if you carry things on one side of the body, whether that's a baby or a big bag of compost, but you're tighter on one side than the other. Again, that's interesting, it's a habit, isn't it, that we've grown to take on board that has affected the physical body. So you just need to be aware of that and try and change some of those habits. And I know the older we get, the more difficult that is. So again, soften everything in your upper body. Try not to grit your teeth. Try to let your head dangle. Try to soften your shoulders and your elbows and your hands. And just allow yourself to breathe. Three more breaths here, please. And then very slowly and very gently, bringing yourself back. Okay, so we're going to come onto our back. And before um, we go back onto the floor, I just want to give you the opportunity for our breathing and relaxation to do that in an inverted pose. So if you've got access to a wall, then it might be an idea that you slide your yoga mat next to the wall. If you're um, doing this, in your office, you could lie on the floor and put your legs on the chair when we come to do this one. But for now, we're gonna just do that little twist we did at the beginning. So do you remember that? Arms out to the side, palms facing up, knees one way, head the other. And then you can take the ankle on top of the thigh. And this kind of a twist I would do on your bed Five minutes each side. Just put a little piece of music on that you know is five minutes long. Put it on repeat and stay here for five minutes. You're going to feel it's a really profound opening twist then. Come back to the center. Swap the knees the other way. Again, stay here or bring the bottom foot onto the top leg. Keep the shoulders relaxed, relax the jaw. So these long poses are just you and gravity and the benefits thereof. So back to the center, if you don't have access to your wall, 
Then I'm going to suggest you come back up into bridge pose that we did at the beginning. I'd just like you to hold that. You could shove, I've got a bolster there, shove a bolster or a couple of cushions under your bottom. So you've just got a nice supported inversion. If however you've got the wall, you can move to the wall. It's a little bit ungainly, but you need to put your bottom against the wall and then shuffle yourself around. So you have got your legs up the wall and your bottom on the floor. And option one is you just stay here. Option two is you press your feet into the wall and you lift your bottom up. So you're now again inverting the body. Okay. You could do half an inversion just by putting a cushion underneath your bottom and having your legs there. Okay. Just with your bottom a bit higher than your heart. If you're feeling a little bit braver, you can take one of the legs off and swap them over. If you know shoulder stand and you've got no neck issues, you'll take both legs off and come into either shoulder stand or let the legs dangle over your head into plow. They might not come anywhere near the floor, it doesn't matter. But then you will bring the feet back onto the wall. So the feet on the wall, again, think what's happening to those digestive organs. And then very slowly and very gently lower yourself down. So we're going to head into our relaxation and breathing session now. So option one is you go back to your mat and lie as we did at the beginning with your feet on the floor and your knees bent. Or option two is you stay here with your legs up the wall, which is quite marvellous. You could stick a little cushion under your bottom if you want to make it an inversion. And you can have your hands in any position that you like. So I'm going to move from this position so I can come back a bit closer to talk you through the breathing and relaxation. I'd like you to settle yourself into that position that you have chosen. So you've either got your back on the floor with your knees bent and your feet on the floor or you've got your legs up the wall. So you can come back again to closing your eyes and settling your body into the support of the earth. And we're going to have a little go at some breathing practice. Now, breathing is an interesting concept because we do it automatically and uh, we don't need to think about it. But we can also control it. So it's like blinking. We do blinking automatically, but we can also control the blinking. So the breathing affects, your breathing, sorry, affects your vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve connects your brain to your heart, to your gut to all of the organs, to be honest, in your um, abdominal cavity. So if your vagus nerve is functioning correctly, it's going to affect your digestion and your overall health and well-being. So we know that stress can slow down our digestion or magnify any discomfort in the digestive system. So when we can reduce overall stress through deep breathing, we can help ease pressure from the gut um, and it will also stimulate the vagus nerve, okay, so that line of communication between the gut and the brain. And that will help regulate muscle contraction and the secretion of the gastric juices that we need to digest. So irritable bowel can be caused by breathing and by stress, okay, as well as, as food issues as well, which we cover in the handout. So the other thing is with this deep abdominal breathing is it takes your body from fight or flight response, which is your sympathetic nervous system, you know, your hamster wheel of your day, <clears throat> and it enables you to step off into parasympathetic, which is rest and digest, repair, renew, rebalance, refresh, all of those things that we also need to give the body time to do. So we know now, studies have shown since the 70s, to be honest, and I was alive then, that if you slow your breath down to approximately five breaths a minute, you stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. You stimulate rest and digest. So not only is that going to improve the tone of the vagus nerve, improve your digestion, but it's also going to reduce the cortisol and adrenaline levels in the body. It's going to lower your heart rate and it's going to lower your blood pressure. What's not to love about that? So the average person is breathing at 15 to 20 breaths a minute. So five breaths a minute is a big ask. So we have to train ourselves to do that. So that's what we're going to do now for the next couple of moments. If you can close your eyes and just again, relax your breath, relax your breath into its natural equilibrium, soften your shoulders, relax your jaw, let your tongue just rest at the roof of your mouth gently. 
and focus in on that breath. We've got four parts to the breath. You've got a beautiful exhalation and a pause if you're choosing and an inhalation and a pause of your choosing. So five breaths a minute is 12 seconds for each breath cycle. And so that's approximately six seconds to breathe in or breathe out, maybe with a pause between each breath. So let's try that together now. There is some music that I use that is very good for helping you do this and I can forward that as a resource. But let's start just doing it now with this silence around us, but obviously it's not silent because you're going to hear your breathing. So when you're ready, take a lovely, relaxed exhalation. And then breathe in for the count of one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and out for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and in for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and out for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and in for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and out for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and in for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and out for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and in for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and out for one, two, three, four, five, and pause. Now allow your breath to just settle. Notice hopefully that feeling of calmness now. You may have heard your stomach rumbling during that. That's a good sign. But take your time to bring your awareness back into your body and into the room, the space that you're in. And you know, if that was a challenge for you to breathe that slowly, then start off with less than that. Yeah, so just do, you know, three seconds to breathe in with a pause and three seconds to breathe out. If that seemed quite fast for you, then gradually increase it. Uh, keep the inhale very light and keep the exhale really deep. There are lots of other breathing practices that we can, we can do and I'm more than happy to share that information with people. So just stay lying down for a moment as I conclude our session today. Uh, you have got a, a handout with lots of resources on, particularly about um, the nutrition aspect of looking after your gut microbiome. And as I said, the good mood foods that will help you uh, reduce your incidences of stress and anxiety along with your breathing and yoga. Um, I've got lots of online classes that you can join live. I've got an eight week a course called Yoga and Immunity Resilience, where not only do we look at the digestive system and your immune system, but we look at the respiratory system, the uh, endocrine system, the lymphatic system, the effect of sleep on stress, the effect of um, the exposome, your environment, the way where you live and, and your interaction with people. Uh, there are lots and lots of free videos on my website for you to join in with as well. And if you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to contact me via the facilitators and I'm more than happy to answer those. But for now, I thank you for taking part today, whether that was live or whether that was on the recording. 
and I very much hope to connect with you again another day. And if you took one thing out of today, then it is breathe. <laughs> yeah, breathe out, count to 10 even rather than five or six. So thank you very much, everybody. Namaste. Thank you, Carol. That was fantastic. And definitely I've taken out to breathe. And also how when I was standing up doing the twisting, I felt really wobbly and and it was uncomfortable, but it re made me realise I need to do it more. So, yeah, that was amazing. What a brilliant session. And I'm sure many people will catch up on the recording. And when when the recording goes out, the worksheet will go with it as well. So people can, can look at the worksheet and uh, any of your contact details. Your Twitter handle is Carol underscore Baker. That's right. Yeah. And uh, everything else will go out. But thank you so much for an amazing session. Thank you.